Shaw, dude. Welcome to the video on radical numbers, brat. Today we're going to go all over this entire unit, right up from simplifying to expanding and multiplying to dividing and solving, brat. Anyway, dude, just going to lay the ground rules like I have for the other videos, and I know I'm sounding like a broken record here. But please, if you have not already tried these questions, dude, don't watch this video, brat. You should be doing these questions first and then using this video as a way of checking your answers, bruh. You'd be watching this going, what's he doing? I don't know. I'm just watching what he's doing. It don't make no sense. So, bruh, if you're ready, let's get started. So, there's absolutely no way I'm going to be doing the whole video with that voice, of course. But uh, we'll get started with question number one. Um, again, we're, we're not going to do every question in this whole book. There's a whole ton of them, and they get kind of samey. They get pretty similar, at least. Uh, so we'll just start with question number one, part A. It says, simplify square root of 150. Well, when we're asked to square root a radical, <clears throat> what we're really looking to do is we're looking to split up what the radical is and make it a mixed radical, which means we need a part on the outside as well as the part on the inside. Well, because it's the square root, we're going to have to think of our perfect squares, which I've listed them all right here. Um, we're going to want to think of our perfect squares and pick the biggest perfect square that we can take out of 150 so we can bring it on the outside of our radical. Um, looking at our list of perfect squares, and of course you can generate this yourself by going 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, and so on. Um, but again, looking at our list of perfect squares, 25 is probably the biggest one there that goes into 150. So we can rewrite 150, or the square root of 150, as the square root of 25 times 6, because 25 times 6 is 150. Now the reason we took a perfect square was so that we can take the square root of it and bring that answer on the outside. So the square root of 25 is 5, so we're left with 5 times the square root of 6. Okay, so for question 1, part B, Notice that we have the cube root of 32 times x to the power of 5. This time, instead of using our squares, we're going to have to use our perfect cubes. The biggest perfect cube that goes into 32, at least from this list, is going to be 8. So we can write this out as the cube root of 8 times 4, because that equals 32, times x to the power of 5. And with that, we can take the cube root of 8, which brings it down to 2, times the cube root of 4x to the power of 5. The only other thing we got to do here is we got to take care of this x to the power of 5. And if you remember the way we did it in class, you just take the exponent on this variable here, divide it by this number up here on the root. Um, so we'll go 5 divided by 3. Well, 5 divided by 3 is 1.66, but we'll just make that 1. So it'll be 2 times x to the power of 1 times the cube root of 4. And then when you went 5 divided by 3, you have to think, well, what's the remainder? 5 divided by 3, like I said, is 1, but the remainder is going to be 2. So we're going to have 2x times the cube root of 4x squared, and that would be your final answer. Okay, so the next one we're going to do here is 2a and 2b. Change each mixed radical into an, into an entire radical. Uh, to do this, it's actually easier than simplifying. If we have 4 times the, cube, or the square root of 3, to turn this into an entire radical, just take the 4 bring it underneath the root sign, and because it's the square root, we don't write a 2 up here, but it would be there if we did that. It's the square root of 3. We square 4, so we'll make it 4 squared times 3, and then we just solve what's underneath there. So it'll be the square root of 16 times 3, and 16 times 3, I believe, is 48. So in other words, 4 times the square root of 3 can be brought into an entire radical by making it the square root of 48. Now, for the other one there, um, 2x times the cube root of 3x squared. This can be done pretty much the exact same way, but just notice we have a cube root instead. So this is going to be 2x cube root of 3x squared. So just take this 2x and bring it underneath the root sign, but we have to cube this first. So we'll make this the cube root. 2x, uh, 2x to the power of 3 is going to be... 2 to the power of 3 and x to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. x to the power of 3 is just x to the power of 3. And then we just multiply that by whatever the radicand was in the first place, which is 3x squared. Combining our like terms here is going to give us the cube root, 8 times 3, which is 24. x cubed times x squared is going to be x5. 
And that would be our final answer. Okay, so for question number three, um, just before we begin, let me just remind you, you can't add and subtract radicals unless they have the same radicand. So in other words, unless the number underneath the root sign is all the same. Um, at, after that point, you just treat them as if they were x's or y's or z's or any other variable. So we'll start with this first one here. Um, 5 times the square root of 2 minus blah blah blah, you get the idea. Basically, just take that 5 to the power of, or 5 times the square root of 2, and we'll combine that with the 7 times the square root of 2. So 5 plus 7 times the square root of 2 is going to give us 12 times the square root of 2. And then going back to this one, we have minus 6 times the square root of 3 minus just the square root of 3. So that'd be like minus 1 times the square root of 3. Well, in total there, we'd have minus 7 times the square root of 3. So again, just treat these uh, roots here, a root 2 and a root 3, just treat those roots as if it was an x and a y. It works all the same one way or another. Now a problem arises, however, when we have something like this. 3 times the cube root of 54 plus 2 times the cube root of 128. Um, in these cases, they don't have matching uh, radicands whatsoever, but we can actually simplify those both down. So remember, cube root, to simplify it, just look at your list of perfect cubes and pick the biggest one that goes into your radicand. So 54, the biggest cube root that's going to go into 54 is going to be 27. So we can make this instead 3 times the cube root of instead of 54, we'll make it 27 times 2, and then plus 2 times the cube root of 128. Well, 128, hold on, cube root, 128 can be broken down into 64 times 2. And remember, we're picking perfect cubes because it was a cube root. So it'll be 2 times the cube root of 64 times 2, because 128 was able to be broken down into 64 times 2. And from there, we just pull these numbers out. Well, the cube root of 27 is just 3, so bring a 3 on the outside here. So it'll be 3 times 3, which is 9, times the cube root of 2, plus the cube root of 64 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, times the cube root of 2. So we have 9 times the cube root of cube, uh, 2 plus 8 times the cube root of 2. So this is just going to combine to give us 17 times the cube root of 2. Okay, so question number 4, we want to multiply radicals. I'll start with 4a, even though it is quite easy. Square root of 6 times the square root of 2. To multiply radicals, you just literally multiply the stuff underneath the radical sign. So it's going to be the square root of 6 times 2, which is 12. But the only other thing we have to do here is it does say simplify. So of course, we don't like entire radicals. We want to break them down into simplified ones. The biggest perfect square that goes into 12 is going to be 4. So it'll be square root of 4 times 3. Now the square root of 4, of course, is 2. So we have 2 root 3, and that is in simplified form. Now we'll jump ahead to 4 part D. Uh, this one's a little bit more complex. We got 2x times the square root of 3y times 3x times the square root of 6y cubed. Now, kind of like the last one here, we can only combine radicals with radicals, but likewise, we can only combine coefficients with coefficients. So if we're going to multiply these together, it's going to be 2x times 3x, which is 6x squared. And then it's going to be root 3y times root 6y cubed, which is going to be root 3 times 6 is 18. y times y cubed is y4. And then we just want to simplify this radical here. So the biggest perfect square that goes into 18 is 9. So we can make this 6x squared times the square root of 9 times 2y to the power of 4. And then, of course, we can also take the square root of y to the power of 4. Remember, go 4 divided by 2. If there was a 2 there, it's a square root, though, so it would be a 2. Well, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so we'll bring a y squared on the outside, and there'll be no y's left over. And meanwhile, we can take the square root of 9 and bring it out, which would be square root of 9 is 3. So 3 times 6 is going to give us 18x squared. Square root of y4 is y squared times the square root of 2. Okay, so question four, part E now. Uh, it says three times root two times uh, square root of two plus square root of three. So we're just gonna copy that down. Three times the square root of two times square root of two plus the square root of three. With this one, of course, we just want to bring this three times square root of two through the brackets. That's gonna become three 
times the square root of 2 times 2, which is the square root of 4, plus 3 times the square root of 3, which is going to be 3 root 2 times 3, which is 6. Now, 3 times the square root of 4, that's just going to be 3 times 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, so that'll be 6, plus 3 root 6. Now, 6 does not actually simplify any further, so we're actually already done. So on to question 5 now. It says divide the following and rationalize the denominators. That's a really important part there, rationalizing denominators. So first things first, if we want to divide these, just divide your coefficients and divide your radicands. So 3 divided by 6 is going to change that to 1 over 2. You can't really divide 3 by 6, but you can simplify it to 1 over 2. And then square root of 6 divided by square root of 2 is just going to give you square root of 3 on the top. Now that one in front there is not actually doing anything, so we might as well just get rid of it, clean the whole thing up, and make it square root 3 over 2. Now the nice thing is, in our answer, our denominator is a rational number, in other words, it's not a square root, so we are actually good to go with this as an answer. I'm going to jump all the way ahead now to question 5, part E. we got 3 times square root of 3 minus square root of 2 times, or divided by 2 times the square root of 2. So 3 root 3 minus the square root of 2 over 2 times the square root of 2. Now, this one's going to be a little weird because we have a radical in a denominator, and we could tackle this by going this divided by this minus this divided by this, but that might, that might be a little bit of work here, and we might want to just avoid that for now. So instead, we need to rationalize this denominator first. Now, to rationalize the denominator, just multiply the whole thing by whatever this denominator is. Uh, so we'll just go 2 root 2 and 2 root 2, so this is just like multiplying by 1 pretty much here, that's all we're really doing. This is not going to change anything, it's just going to change the way it looks. Um, so we'll start by multiplying the bottom. 2 times, or 2 root 2 times 2 root 2 is going to give us 4 root 4. Actually I should move that down, give myself a little extra room here. So it's going to be 4 root 4. And then 3 root 3 minus 2 times 2 root 2 is going to be 3 times 2 is 6 times the square root of uh, 3 times 2, which is the square root of 6, minus square root of 2 times 2 root 2 is going to be 2 root 4. Um, now, you might think, okay, well, we still have a square root in the denominator. Nothing's been ra uh, rationalized here. Um, but we can actually rationalize that quite easily, because the square root of 4 is just 2. Same with the square root of 4 up here, it's just 2. So we can actually simplify this to a much easier form, where we have 6 I'm sorry that it's kind of all cut off here. Let's just break this apart. It's going to be 6 root 6 minus 2 times 2, which is 4, over 4 times 2, which is 8. And then that's a rationalized form. The only problem with this now is that we could actually factor out a 2 from here and a 2 from here and a 2 from here. So we can make this an even more simplified answer. And I know I'm jumping all over the page here. Um, but if we factor the 2 out of all these, to simplify this whole fraction down, uh, it'll give us 6, or 3 root 6, I mean, 3 root 6 minus 2 over 4. So that might be actually a bit better of an answer, because we were able to take a 2 out of here, a 2 out of here, and a 2 out of here to get a much simpler fraction right there. Okay, so we're almost done here. We just have two more questions that I'm going to show you guys on solving radical equations. Um, first one here, square root 3x minus 2 equals 7. So we'll go square root 3x minus 2 equals 7. Remember the number one rule when you're solving radical equations is you want to get rid of the radical whenever possible. And the best way to do this is to get the radical all by itself at some point and then square both sides. So if we square both sides here, it's going to give us 3x minus 2 equals, well, 7 squared, which is 49. Then we're going to want to add 2 on both sides, so 3x equals 51. And then, of course, we're going to want to divide by 3. And I'm pretty sure 51 divided by 3 is 17, but you never know, so let's just type that in. And it is, so x equals 17. And then for the very last one on this page, we want to solve this equation. 6 minus 2 times the square root of x plus 7 equals negative 2. So again, from that last one, remember we want to get this part, this radical part right here, we want to get it all by itself. 
So first things first, I would suggest getting rid of the 6 and bringing it over to the other side. So we'll minus 6 on both sides, which is going to give me negative 2 times the square root of x plus 7 equals negative 2 minus 6, which is negative 8. Now we really, really, really want to get this all by itself. So that means we're even going to have to divide by negative 2 here. So divide by negative 2 on both sides is going to give us the square root of x plus 7 equals negative 8 divided by negative 2, which is positive 4. Then we can square both sides, and that's going to give us x plus 7 equals 4 squared, which is 18, or 16. And then we want to subtract 7 from both sides and find that x equals 9. So with that, radicals is all done. I think that was the quickest video yet, um, and we'll go from there.